asked me to be more with just a bunch of nerds. And uh, this gentleman here is not Haggis. Uh, we brought in a special guest here. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Scott Freer. I'm from Double Decker Games. And uh, so Scott and I decided to, uh, we, we came across each other looking through different board games and uh, we've been promoting games and how to play them. And uh, Scott designed some games. So we thought, let's work together here. Uh, Scott, you have a Kickstarter started right now? Yeah, I got a Kickstarter for, uh, for three games simultaneously. Uh, the Markets, Emprise, and 3-2 Boom, which takes place in downtown Winnipeg. So that's kind of the, the local aspect that uh, we're getting involved in here. And uh, so we are, we, we are filming right now in Amusing Games. Uh, it's on Portage Avenue in Winnipeg. Uh, Brian here is our the owner slash cameraman, if he's going to jump in here. <laughs> He'll maybe throw out... Uh, an address here? 1839 and a half Portage Avenue. I remember that and a half. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we got locally designed games here. I thought this was great. We've got some, you know, everything local here trying to promote. Because, I mean, you, you want to buy local, you want to develop. I mean, you can buy things online. But where are you going to play them? I mean, you, you know, it, it's, it's nice to come here. And Brian offered up the store for us to, uh, to play the games. Uh, but first, just tell me a bit about uh, about these games. Uh, they're unique. I, they're very unique in the way you uh, came across them. Well, so thanks. You... Um, well, the the inspiration for well, I guess I should explain what they are. Uh, they're full tabletop games that also double as a standard fifty two card deck. Uh, the motivation from them came from a lot of frustration, really. I mean, uh, my little brother was showing me a card game that used like a standard deck of cards, and I remember thinking like, this is really frustrating to learn. I, I wish like the rules were just written right on the card so I could remember exactly what to do and when to do it. And then once I did that, I had all the rules printed. I remember thinking, this would make a really fun war game. I wish this thing had pictures and a theme to it. And everything just kind of snowballed from there. And uh, we started finding more and more games that, uh, that were lacking the same qualities that we decided to put in and, and turn into full games. And so, you, and as you said, like these are actually, you got one of them right here, this yeah, is the Markets? Absolutely. Yeah, it is. Um, so we have another local illustrator doing the artwork as well, Kelly Antea, she's doing a great job. Uh, so the premise is that you're trying to, to win stocks and you have to speculate or, or guess what the value of your cards as well as the other person's cards are. Um, should I show the other games as well? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. a brief, uh, we'll show here. And we're, we're gonna get into in depth here. I think today we're going to start off with Emprise. Emprise. Yep. And uh, we'll see how that one goes, and then we'll, we'll eventually we'll get onto other videos and uh, show how all these are done. Yeah. So let's get a good photo here of the, uh, the armored cards here. So as you can see, uh, they also double as, the, the, like I said, the standard 52 card deck right there. Uh, this was the game that my little brother was trying to show me that I was getting really frustrated with. And I was always looking up the, the rules on the little memory aid. The, yeah, the, the players, and I guess when they see you pointing at you yeah. know, 10, well, I wonder what he's doing. It doesn't help next. that I have like bad eyesight just like <laughs> going through it. And be like, oh, because the little brother could always beat me because he knew I had it too. Um, so that was the motivation for that one there. And uh, Now, and, um, he showed me all of, um, is it, you said 3 2 boom? 3 2 boom. That, that one there is, is, I think, my favorite of the three. Um, <laughs> it's my favorite too. And, and it's the Winnipeg flair is a big part of it. Yeah. Um, now you have Kickstarter rewards for all three games. Like I know you have, you can get put on the cards. Is that for all the games or? Yeah, each of them has a, a different option to get yourself on the cards. Uh, so, for example, for Emprise, you can actually be illustrated as a German naval officer, and in the game you will be the German naval officer, or like the Jack of Jack of Clubs, for example. Um, in 3-2 Boom, you can get yourself illustrated anywhere downtown. Well, not illustrated, so we're going to be taking the photographs, actually, for the local films. Okay. So, so you can get uh, uh, yourself holding a machete or a stack of cash and uh, be involved in the game that way. Well, in my line of work, I don't think my boss would appreciate me carrying a machete in a game. You know what? You can just be the, the go-to guy. It's a resource Okay, the go-to well. guy. And really, after Winnipeg and Evander Kane and how they treated him holding a stack of cash, you may want to be careful <laughs> as to how you hold your stack of cash on the card. I really doubt I'll be doing these fancy push-ups because that, that's a lot of work. <laughs> you know, there's lots of other available options, though. You can just get uh, yourself listed as a neighbor. Okay. Two social points. That, that's that's good. That's good. Yeah. 
<clears throat> and now, are these all the games you have, or you know, do you have any more that you're coming down with? Or? You know, uh, me and my friends came up with uh, about a dozen games. Really? So this uh, is we uh, we only developed probably about six of them into into playable games. We took kind of a, a shotgun method to. And the, to were this. these the ones that just that jumped out the best, or how did you pick them? Like what? Uh, pretty much, we went with the ones that we played the most. We'd, we'd get together probably about once a week. We'd have a standard deck of cards with a bunch of Sharpie markings on them from the different games we were making. Okay. And, uh, yeah, we had about a dozen to start off with, and then six we played semi-regularly, and then these are the three that uh, we decided were our favorites. And so we we put the money into that and got some of them illustrated and cool. worked out all the kinks. I'm excited. I think uh, let's start out with Emprise. I want to see how this game goes. I like military. You wanna play a game right now? Yeah, let's play a game. Okay, great. Um, so for two player, we start off with six cards each. Uh, that trails down depending on the, the number of players. So if you have two players, it's gonna be six. If you have three players, it's gonna be five. Uh, four cards for four or five players, and that's the limit for, uh, okay, so for how many players. Okay, so five players, okay. Uh, there's two different types of cards. One of them is, I'm just going to show the camera here. Yep. Uh, an enlisted card, those are aces to tens. Most of them have two effects. One of them you can either play from your hand for its reinforcement value, or you can discard from your hand that card for its effect. Okay. The other type of card is the officer cards. These ones, they don't have a reinforcement value. You can just play for their permanent effect. Uh, you can only do one action per turn, so you can play a card, you can discard a card if it's an enlisted card for its effect, you can draw a card, or you can do what's called scuttling, where if somebody has a card in play... So let's just say I had this one here, the battleship, so it's a three. Absolutely. I can discard from my hand a card of equal or greater value, an enlisted card of equal or greater value, Okay, so it's to you destroy, to attack there. your card there. Okay. That's it. And so I, I just see here, I'm just going to show the officer cards, as you can see at this time, are uh, some Kickstarter promotions for them. Absolutely. And so that's for all three officers? That's a for all three officers, yes. Okay. Um, you know, we'll see how this goes. Uh, you guys might have to all fight over one of the other ones. I might. You know, I mean, to be, <laughs> to be immortalized in a game... <laughs> I mean that's that's pretty cool. I think that's that's something I want to get into, and uh, this might be the first one where I get my mug out there. <laughs> oh, yeah. that, that helps sales yeah. though. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, so we'll count uh, those two as our first two turns. Okay. And uh, uh, so I'd be back to you. Okay. So well, I mean, that was a bad turn for both of us, but. I'm <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, because I, I like the battleship, the the three reinforce not great to start all officers can have a better effect but yeah. but I mean that definitely I would have used that for its effect later on yeah uh, so that's to take any card in the discard pile so obviously that can really come in handy later on in the game and then when you say take so that's back into my hand back in your hand and that would be my turn though. that would be your turn so well, I'm gonna draw so I take that as my turn and I'm gonna draw as well for my turn I am also going to draw, and now hand size. Uh, there's no hard limit, however one of the effects uh, on one of the cards is that you discard down to five cards. Okay, so... So there's a little bit of a soft limit there, where you don't want to be continually drawing, now because that, that'll just burn through a lot of your, your turns. Is that everyone, or is that your opponents discard down, like are you safe? It would be all your opponents discard either two cards, or down to five cards, whichever results in more discards. <laughs> okay. So it is a pretty powerful effect, but it's also worth nine points, so it's normally uh, a toss-up whether you want to discard and kind of burn through everyone else's hand, or play it, because nine points is quite a lot. Now, uh, the cards go from uh, ace to ten. Ace to ten. Are the point scoring, and so it's from one, one to ten. One points as well. And so what's the, the what, are, what are we trying to do? How are we trying to win Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, <laughs> When you get uh, 21 or more reinforcement points, when you end your turn with 21 or more reinforcement points, you get a victory point. Okay. And to win, uh, you need a certain number of victory points, and that's six minus the number of players. So in this case, since we have two players, you only need four points to win. So for a five-person game, you need... You need to do it once. 
that that sounds interesting. Okay. Well, it is, but you can see when that's coming up. You can see when people are within ten points, ten reinforcement points of getting one. And so everyone has a chance to burn through there and that's to, true. That's true. to take a turn and try to bring you back down. And so there's a little bit of cooperation there, where if you want to keep the game going, <laughs> you have to maybe put yourself in a little bit uh, of a worse position okay, than yeah. you might like. But you know that uh, somebody else might be winning next turn, so you have to, yeah. to do your part. Now you drew, right? Yes, I did. You drew. So I'm going to play the submarine. And so what, what's the terminal every game is so what's the terminology for when I put it in play? I'm, is there a deploying or in You're just playing it. That's just, it. Oh, yeah, it's so I know you mentioned scuttling for destroying, so I thought I didn't know if there's a special term for it. No, no, it's so it's, it's just playing. Play the um, since it's a really new game, I really want the the terminology to come out naturally. So if a lot of the players start using the term deploying uh, then, I, I, then that might come naturally, but I don't I don't want to force it. Okay. Alright. Let's see what I have here. Um, like deployed. Deployed, we can do that. I'm going to deploy uh, infantry for seven points. Okay. I'm going to play a recruitment officer. Take an enemy card in play as your own. That card returns to the enemy if this one's discarded. So I have recruited the infantry. Yep. So I just tucked them under there. I figure that'll mark it. So I'm at 16. Now, I know that you're in a position where you could get a victory point next turn. Uh, just by virtue of you need, uh, what, five points? Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to discard a battleship. Its effect is to discard all officers in play. Okay. So the recruitment officer is discarded here. And now, this infant here. I want to... Okay, so I've got... I've noticed all the cards here are have a, a turn effect, but uh, I've got fighters. Oh, okay. And so fighters may be used out of turn. So they may. You can scramble the fighters. Scram okay, I like that, scrambling the fight. <laughs> so um, I played magic. Is this like my interrupt? Oh, well, yeah, yeah, that's kind of your counter magic. spell there. Yeah, okay, counter spell, yeah. So I'm going to I'm going to scramble those fighters. Okay. So what that does is that uh, nullifies the effects of any discarded enlisted oh, yeah, card. Explain what. Uh, but then you also have to skip your next turn. So it's my turn again. And I'm going to play my own recruitment officer. I'm going to take your nine. Okay, that's, that did not... That did not work as well as I thought, so I will draw. I'm going to draw as well. I'm going to draw as well again. Yep, so am I. <laughs> I'm going to play Armored. So Armored, it looks like no effect, just a big, powerful... Just full 10 points, that's it. Um, I'm going to discard Artillery here, and its effect is to uh, return any card in play to the top of the deck. I'm going to take the Recruitment Officer to the top <laughs> of the deck there. I'm going to take this 7 back. So you're it's 16. Your turn. 16. I'm gonna draw. I wonder what I'm gonna get. I'm gonna play uh, another infantry here. Sorry, deploy. Another infantry here. And that brings me over 21 points. That gives me uh, one victory point. Now, can I recruit your recruitment officer? You can. So if I recruit that, you would get. Get my submarine back. You would get your submarine back. Okay. Oops. But I've left you really open right now to get a second point. It's all I, that I, the fact that it's the end of your turn kind of you got to really think ahead in this because I mean I took that back, but I'm leaving you. You're leaving me within the ten points that I could get here. So all yeah. I need is uh, well another seven points to get to twenty-one and a second victory point there. Now you're fortunate, I don't have a 7 or higher. So I'm going to do something really drastic here. Because I know that you might be getting, or most definitely will be getting a, another victory point at the end of your turn. Uh, so I'm going to discard my bomber for its effect. That is uh, to discard all reinforcements in play. Including my own. Well, that's, uh, that's harsh. It is, harsh. it is. 
What happened if you recruited my recruitment officer? Would this one take back the submarine, or...? Yeah, it follows the, the most recently played recruitment officer. So, but, so if you took this one, you would gain control of this one. Would it get back its old card that it used to control? I just break the game. No, I don't, I don't think you broke the game. <laughs> well, I don't think we break, but it just... You see what I'm saying, right? Like, it's... You know, if, if there was... Let's just say this was also a recruitment officer here. Okay. So you recruited this one. So you take him. You free your old recruitment officer. What happens with him now? Uh, they would all just stay stacked on, on top of the card there. Oh, okay. So, for example, if I had the very top recruitment officer, I played the last one and you destroyed it, you'd get that back with the two recruitment officers on it. And then say I destroyed the one that you played, I would get it back. So essentially, for the sake, this should have been still tucked under there because it, eventually that could have came back. Oh, you mean through the like Yeah, when, if, when if I, I got rid of this one, it would have come back to me. And then if you got rid of that, it would have gone back. To okay. Me. So, but anyways, that's gone anyway. Okay. Now, right. So, let's play the armored. For 10 points, they're going to draw a card. I'm also going to draw a card. Armored. I'm going to bomb the field again. I'm going to scramble the fighters. Okay. Hmm. I'm going to draw a card. Okay. So let's, here's one that hasn't come up yet this game. We have the general. So I may force fighters, artillery, recruitment officers to target this. Yeah, so we've seen fighters. Uh, well, I guess they were never actually used for their ability. Uh, no, they have uh, two abilities. Oh, so it, it could... You can play it on your turn to discard an officer in play. But if this would not... If I used it out of turn, this wouldn't block that, would it? If I used no. this as a count... Okay, so no. just for... So we need to so discard an officer in play, so I could play it for that. Yep. And uh, recruitment officer... And artillery, have we went through artillery yet? Yeah, I think we did. Oh, yeah, I tried to return something to your top of the deck. Okay, so, and I may, I'm not required to. I'm sure there's. It generally is a good idea. Yeah, I'm sure there's some obscure reason not to. Uh, generally, if you're playing with uh, four players, there, there might be some reason to deflect or not deflect it from another player, or you, you might choose it to direct it against yourself. Okay. Just depending on how the dynamics work. So that would go to you now, because I played yep. the general. And what I would try to do here normally, if you didn't play that, is a recruitment officer on one of those tens. And I was going to play something <laughs> different. I thought, no, that's this was going to help me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to target one of your tens with the artillery turned to the top of the deck. We're going to redirect it to that. And I'm going to assume we're in a victory point this turn. Play bombers. And so that gives me one victory point, so we're, we're tied both at one, one And then I'm going to use a recruitment officer on your turn. Okay. Uh, you know what's there? I'm going to play another general. Okay. Hmm. See, I know that if you have a card that can discard this officer, you'd get the 10 back and you'd get a victory point. You'd be bringing me down. That's a really good move if you can get rid of that officer there. Uh, so I'm going to try to defend it. I'm going to put my own general. I'm going to draw. Normally I'd wait for more cards to go on the offensive here, but uh, I'm going to play deploy <laughs> infantry for 7 points. I'm gonna draw because we all. I knew I was getting a general, and that didn't really help. I, I'm not. I'm not liking what I have right here. Well, I'm gonna have to play something just because. Might have to. I'm gonna deploy uh, the recce here for four points. I'm at 21. At the end of my turn, I'm at two victory points here without a hand. And that's actually what I was gonna talk. I have the recce, and I was gonna talk about. So that one's ability is reveal enemy's hand. Yep. Um, I have one of those. I can see your hand. <laughs> so you've got two. Oh, hold on. Uh, is there anything you can do about this? If, if you draw this turn, I'm going to end up with three. That's how it's looking for me right now. Really? 
Okay. Well, obviously I'm gonna draw a card and end with three, three victory points. Battleship, discard all officers in play. Okay. Oh, that was good. And so that will give me twenty-two points, two victory points. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna have to draw a card. So no matter what you do this turn, you're gonna end up with uh, with three victory points. And I'm gonna play it safe. Okay. I'm gonna throw the general. So I got three. So it's three to three here. Three to three. I have to do something this turn. I think the only thing I can do is uh, to scuttle your two with a three here. <coughs> And, you know, other than our demo scuttle in the beginning, that, that hasn't even come into effect this game. But any non-officer in hand, I've got a recce here. Yeah, I was hoping you'd have two officers there. So that's uh, four victory points for you, right? Four victory points for me. Congratulations. <laughs> so tell me a bit about, I'm noticing some cards with art, some not with art. What is what is your plan here? I know these ones are for the Kickstarter. Right. Um, Something you're just working on, or just trying to get the game out? Yeah, there. Uh, I just I jumped the gun a little bit with. Uh, anyways, <laughs> we're just waiting to get it to, uh, all the illustrations filled up. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, that's part of the here. Kickstarter as well. I mean, just getting all the money and uh, all the resources available to to really finish the game. Yeah. And now uh, I I see here is this going to be like this is your company? Oh, yeah. I guess. Yep, uh, double decker games. Okay, is that gonna is there gonna be an actual Emprise back for this, or are you gonna stick with just your logo on here? What are no, we're gonna be uh, having something very similar to this. Um, right now, the plan is to have the Double Decker Games logo and then the name on the bottom. Okay. Just to have some sort of uh, uniformity among all of our games, but still be able to tell which game is which by looking at the battles. Yeah. Well, I, and I saw that, and with the, the the three different games, the one thing I did like is. Well, the first thing, I, I love the, you know, it's a regular deck of cards. It is a regular deck of cards. And sometimes we play <laughs> games where we want to mix two decks together, and you know, like we've got one of your other games here, and you could shuffle these two and play a regular game of, uh, which I can't think of the game I use two decks in now. Uh, Nines is a game I play with two decks, and you wouldn't even, there'd be no marking of the cards because they look exactly the same. So there is a benefit to that as well. Hmm. But then you also want to brand it. So, you know, it's... Something to consider. I mean, there's just, there's so many games out there that, uh, that people don't play because there's a lot to remember or they lack the themes. And this is just a great medium for, for those games to be really enjoyed more. I mean, this particular game, the precursor for this one, uh, my little brother was trying to show me, and this was what kind of inspired the whole, the premise of having double decker games, was that I really could not remember 13 different effects. <laughs> so that's that was hard for me to do, and I didn't want to like write that, write them all down, and like go through the list so we'd see which one I was looking at, so we'd know what I had in my hand. So. Did this game start off as a like like that? Like you knew, hey, I've got a four. A four does this. That was it, yeah. Because I mean, the value is straightforward. Yeah. Uh, in, in case anyone didn't catch on, the three is worth three reinforcement. Ten is worth ten. Ace is worth one. It, that's very straightforward, and it is just remembering the effect. And yeah, I, I've done played games, even other board games. You got the reference card, but it's like, okay, he's looking at that <laughs> reference. Yep. I'm gonna stay away. You know, it, it does give it away, and so. That, does yeah, but that was the inspiration for for these games, was that there's a lot of fun games, and it is a fun game even without the, the illustrations or the names on the cards. I mean, yeah. it's just, it is a coat of paint when it's all said and done, but, and the strategy is, is all the same if you're playing with a standard deck, but you lose that kind of, that immersion with the theme, Yeah. and it's not as fast paced because you always have to think and try to remember what, uh, what the different specs were. Yeah. Yeah. But this, yeah, so this is M-Pride, um, so you get 52 guards plus the two jokers. Yep. Now, you get two, is this are they the same? They are the same. So uh, I mean, the rules are, are rather <laughs> concise for this particular game. Normally you have the distinct up. jokers, and yep. that's, that is really, I mean, to have two rule cards, I mean, hey, 
here. <laughs> Teach two people how to play. Here's your rule card. Here's your rule card. Ask some questions if you okay. need. It. But this seems quite simple. And you said it plays two to five. Yeah. Two to five players. Yeah. And it's just as difficult with two players as it is with five uh, because of the the victory point system. It's in generally the same number of chances for people to, to bring you back down. Okay. Well, I want to I want to thank you for bringing this game on the show. Um, I'm hoping everyone likes this. And you've got uh, Kickstarter going on right now. Yeah, I do. Uh, so for uh, for eighteen dollars Canadian, there's free shipping along with that. You can get a copy of this game. And for uh, I think it's one hundred and twenty five dollars, you can get yourself immortalized on one of the cards. Not bad at all, not bad at all. So you can get yourself illustrated as a, a German naval officer and be the king of hearts for, for at least the first 1,500 <laughs> copies of this game. Well, that's still, I mean, hey, then those, are, <laughs> those look exclusive, like, hey, first edition. That's it, there's only 12 cards available. That's No, that, that is actually quite appealing, so definitely take a look in that, and uh, hopefully this will get the word out there more, and free shipping. Like free shipping, you know, because the, the decks are are just 54 cards, they barely fit the requirement for oversized letter mail. Really? Oh, yeah. So they cost like a dollar ninety eight to ship anywhere in Canada. Yeah, and that's as now is this free internet? Um, USA as well. I'm I'm including the US as free shipping as well. Okay. I mean that's just a courtesy. Yeah, and then just Europe. to keep things simple. So if we're going overseas, then we're getting into a bit of shipping, probably. Or have you looked into? I'm that I'm okay with that. Well, if, I mean, if somebody in in England or Scotland is really excited to play these games, I, I don't I don't want shipping to be an issue there. Okay, well, no, I mean that's great because I shipping and especially being in Canada, I don't know how much you've looked at the Kickstarter. Being in Canada, the dollar shipping to Canada is tough. <laughs> it is. So, hey, that's that's great. I think that's a great way to get across here. Uh, so yeah, I want to thank you for bringing this out. And uh, so this I am B more with just a bunch of nerds. I'm Scott Freer from Double Decker Games. And uh, thank you for watching our video. And uh, check this out. Look out for more more collaborations. I have a feeling this is going to work out. You know, we're going to see more Double Decker on uh, just a bunch of nerds here. So thank you very much. Have a good day. <laughs>